Come on up here at 858 here at 90.1 FM KKFI, Kansas City Community Radio. Next up, I've got an I got some music and an interview. The name of the band is High Castle Tell Orchestra. The name of the album is The Egg That Never Opened. That's the title track that we're going to play. If you like Frank Zappa, if you like this stuff, it's very much in that genre, that arena. If you want to call it that, this is all over the place, but it is genius. Then we're going to play a track, The Egg That Never Opened. We're going to do an interview with the leader of the band. Then we're going to finish it off with another track from the album. But High Castle Tell Orchestra, the name of the song, name of the album, The Egg That Never Opened. If you just tuned in, you're listening to 90.1 FM, KKFI, Kansas City Community Radio. That last track we just played was from High Castle Tele Orchestra, The Egg That Never Opened. And we just happened to have one of the members on the line with us, Tim Smolens from the band. Welcome to KKFI. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's nice to be here. It's great to have you. Tell us about this album. How did it come to be? Oh, man. So, you know, I've, I've been recording for some 15, 20 years um, largely with the band Astratosphere, who I used to be in when we came through town and you saw us before. Um, long story short, had kids, kind of got out of music for more than a decade, you know, got a degree in ER nursing and paid the bills, but now the kids are getting a little bit older and I had some time to make some music. So um, I called up some friends around the, the globe, honestly, some virtuosos that I just like, I just dawned on me one day, like, I know all these amazing musicians and, you know, the pandemic had set in, so people had to work remotely anyway. Uh, I just said, hey, let's form a band, and it just kind of worked out, and we set to work on a record that took about two years and is coming out now. It's quite a genius bit of work. I've been listening to it. I was listening to it today, and even from the first song, I when I first heard it, it was just amazing, but I had to go back and listen to it. Even just in the first minute, you cover so much in just that first minute, but you know, the whole song encompasses what you're trying to do, and then the whole album is just, you listen to the whole thing, it just kind of lends itself, it kind of leads you into it. It's just, it's amazing. But you put this together, and you had quite a variety of musicians on this. So who all did you have? All right, so I... I, I went back to my core of a stratosphere and pulled a couple guys that I thought we would you know be right for the project um, got uh, Timba Harris uh, the violinist right, right. from a stratosphere uh, Dave Murray the original drummer um, the, the primary partnership is actually me and the guitarist Chris Bogan who doesn't have you know a name affiliation in this scene of some super mildly famous band like some of us but um, <laughs> he, he's the guy I work with sort of on a day to day basis I'd met him as a fan of our group and anyway great guitarist and he, him and I are co-producers where we sort of bounce every idea off each other everyone else pretty much just plays but anyway we got um, those three guys from Astratosphere including myself we have um, Bear McKinnon who played keyboards and tenor sax for Mr. Bungle super awesome uh, songwriter and just really great to have his uh, unique input um, he lives in Australia we've got um, Steon Carstensen, who's from the band Farmer's Market, who's uh, basically, honestly, one of the greatest virtuosos in the world. He plays accordion, he plays like 10 different instruments, like, like a virtuoso. Um, and he's heavily featured on this album with, you've probably heard some of those crazy accordion solos, yes, but he yes. does stuff that no one ever thought was even like remotely possible on this instrument. So um, that is pretty much the main group, and uh, we kind of go from there. Well, since I'm getting the impression that you weren't all in the same place when you recorded <laughs> and made this album. Tell us about that. That's true. Um, you know, it started during the pandemic, and, and we like to sort of, you know, box it for the media that, oh, yeah, out of necessity, these musicians were communicating remotely. It's like, guess what? We actually all live really far apart, and we're not moving near each other. So it, this would have been this way anyway, which is kind of the big joke. But either way, we, we thought there was a need for some creativity to be happening, you know, uh, afar. And even, the, you know, the, the root tele, uh, tele orchestra it implies remote. So oh, we're an orchestra see, that's remote. Um, so I pretty much do all the producing of, like, the files, like, I have the files and I send stuff to people and they send it back. Chris and I are the ones who bounce all the production ideas off each other and everyone else pretty much just sends in their tracks and I apply them. Wow. If you just tuned in, we're talking to Tim Smolens of High Castle Tele Orchestra. We're getting all the details about this album they have out called The Egg That Never Opened. And 
we're just getting a background about everything you did, but it's it's just an amazing piece of work. So who is all coming up with the core of the songs? Chris and I pretty much, like I said, the same way we're part of the production, we're doing all of the, like, here's which songs we're doing. We're open to the other guys doing it, but they're all, like, really busy professional musicians. So even to get their involvement was, was quite a task. So at this point, we're happy, and we're, we're down if they want to take more of a role in that way. But Chris and I pretty much drive the, the songs um, of, of which way they're going to go. And we actually base all our songs so far on um, a, a book by science fiction author Philip K. Dick. So okay. we actually use the – it's the book called Radio Free Album Move. It wasn't right. popular or anything, but it, we are basing our whole story on that, and we pretty much read a chapter, and we let us, we let that chapter sort of tell us how the song is going to go, oh, and we just man. go with it, and it, it kind of works. <laughs> that is very interesting. That is very interesting. You just released it, so where can our listeners find it? I imagine it's everywhere on the internet, but where would they need to go? You know, I like Bandcamp. I think it's one of the best things going for musicians as far as them getting paid from their stuff. There's almost right, nothing right. like it. Um, we have our own website, High Castle Tele Orchestra. Dot com. You, know, you can sign up for an email list there in the same form, but you can go there and buy it. You can also go to Bandcamp. We have um, high fidelity, sort of 180 gram vinyl, which comes in two vinyl. We've got like a double CD, which has a 20 page digi book. So we okay, really wanted okay. to make the physical products be kind of collector's items. Okay. We also have the downloads, which come with like almost 40, mo- 40 or more like really significant bonus tracks that are like radical remixes of the record that cast it okay. pretty much in a whole new light. Um, I've never really seen anything like this done, but it almost killed us to be done with the <laughs> album and then need to come up with 40 more interesting mixes. I'm telling you, I'm, I barely made it to this phone call. I'm still mixing right now, and the album releases tomorrow, so I, I will be up all night finishing the final okay. track. I appreciate you taking this time out of your schedule to do this interview. Um, like I said, if you just tuned in, we're talking to Tim Smolens from High Castle Tele Orchestra. I imagine since you're all in remote locations, is there ever going to be a chance you're going to perform this live somewhere, get all together in the same place and do this? You know, the the, the cards are definitely not aligning in that direction. Right. We're all older. You know, we've done this for a long time. Some of us have families, like Chris and I, the main two guys, where... Um, who knows? I, I'm not going to say there's absolutely no way, but we're not designed like that. I mean, you've heard how complicated yeah, the songs are. Sure. Like, I, I recorded my parts. I don't even know how to play them. It's been so long since I played those parts because <laughs> I've been producing them. So I would say that this would have to achieve some modicum of success where there was a demand for it. Doesn't have, I mean, we're not talking we have to be Justin Bieber here, but it would have to be something where there's like a, a Frank Zappa type of energy and interest right, toward it or right. John Zorn. Or these right. people that can play for a thousand people or something in that. You know, and who knows? Right now, I think our best bet is to keep making records because that's, I think, where we really shine. Honestly, is just right, is, is right. what we do differently on record. I see, I see. And another question I want to ask is: You put this out, so I imagine is there going to be some more future tele orchestra albums? Yeah, this is, like I said, based on the book Radio Free Album Muth, which is a 30-chapter book. We took a linear approach. We didn't try to get too deep that, you know, the chap- we'll start with Chapter 29 is the first song. No, we start with Chapter 1, and then the next song's Chapter 2. So this is 10-song album, and the next one will be the next 10 songs. So this will be a trilogy wrapping up that book, and I would honestly be surprised if we do finish it in our lifetime. So that's the, the basic goal, yeah. is can we do, right. do uh, th- two more of these records without sinking our family lives? <laughs> that is, well, like I said, if you just tuned in, we're talking to Tim Smolens from High Castle Tele Orchestra. They have a new album out, The Egg That Never Opened. It's some amazing stuff. We already played one track. We started off with the title track from the album. We're going to finish it off with another track from the album. But I want to thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to do this interview. And I was wondering if there's anything else you might want to tell our listeners before you go. Yeah, it was certainly a pleasure being on. I thank you for having me, and we'll come back at uh, any time you'll have us. Um, yeah, I would love to see people check out this record. You could go to HighCastleTeleOrchestra.com or go to Bandcamp and type in High Castle Tele Orchestra and get it in any format you want, collector's item, you know, CDs, and vinyl, or just downloads, um, all kinds of extra interesting stuff like chord charts come with the download. So okay. it's a really cool package. I would love to see people uh, check it out and sort of get this band, um, you know, trying to do some branding. <laughs> right, right. Like I said, High Castle Tele-, Tele Orchestra, the egg that never opened. Tim, thank you for taking the time again to do this interview, and we look forward to having you back and do more interviews on KKFI and, and be playing all the tracks from your album as well. So. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yes, I got another track from this album, High Castle Tele Orchestra. 
The name of it's called Mutual Hazard from the album called The Egg That Never Opened. <laughs> 